Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the Magic Leap videos. We're going to be doing an example today that I basically cloned from another one of my examples. And that is to read information from an audio file. As we read that information from the audio, we'll play it. And then we'll use the audio data to deform a couple of 3D models that I have in the scene. Then what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be using our hands to detect whether we want to mute the audio or we want to unmute the audio. The reason why I did these two gestures is because the face is going to mute it and the open hand is going to unmute it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today. So right now I have a project that I created called Magic Leap Audio Spectrum. And if I hit play, let me show you what it does. I'm going to mute it because it's actually going to play pretty loud. So if you hit play, it's gonna it's gonna play the scene and it's going to apply vertex vertex displacement to every 3D model. I'm also basically moving each one of these 3D models up and down. And what I want to do for this session is I want to be able to control the audio. So if if I for instance if I use my hands and I close it, I make a fist. I want the face to be able to basically mute the audio and I want the hand completely wide open to turn turn the audio back on. So we're going to be using our hands to be able to track the state. I also want to change the UI and the, basically label when the when the audio is on, when the audio is off, also at the what, what's called the key post confidence and that value determines, you know, how confident is the framework from detecting you know the actual pose that you're doing with your hands so let's go ahead and, and get started so um what i did with this session i already checked it in so you're more than welcome to open it up there should be a check-in for the state as it is now without the, ha the hand tracking and where i put that which i'm going to put in the description of this video is i put it in my github account under dilmar v magic leap audio spectrum and just like I have in every other video, I have a repo for this session as well. So I'll do a new commit as soon as we're done with the coding on this one. So let's go, go ahead and go back to, to Unity. So I'm going to show you some things before we get started and that you need to make sure that you get set up if you're, if you're doing a new project. Just always make sure that you create this plugins folder and also put a Lumen folder inside of it. And then what this has is going to have a manifest. This is really important. If you don't do that, it's not going to allow you to basically track your hands. So let's open up the manifest and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we look in here, this is where we, you know, we can tell the framework when we can tell Lumen that we're going to get basically, we, we need all these privileges to be given to us. So we're basically asking for permissions. For instance, if we need to do hand tracking, for, sh for sure we're going to need this line, which is gesture subscribe. So we're subscribing to the gesture system so by default i'm adding everything the reason why i'm adding everything is because this is just a prototype but if you were to you know work on a production app you probably don't want to do all these different privileges unless you really need them so just keep in mind that you'll need this file and in fact this line to be able you know to track your your hand basically have the hand tracking work so once you have that going you can close out of it i already have it in the repo so you don't have to worry about it but I always like to mention that I, you know, that I did certain things so you, that you know how things work if you create a new project. So the next thing that I want to show you is I want you to go to Assets, Magic Leap, Examples. And I'm going to be basing my, my coding based on the hand tracking example that we have in here that Magic Leap provided to us. So if we go into hand tracking and we go into the hierarchy and we can go into content. And Magic Leap has these different, you know, these three different uh, game objects with uh, scripts associated with them already. And I already, I already studied them and I already went in and find out how they work. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be saving you that time and explaining to you as I work on them. So the ones, that, the one that we're really going to need is this hand tracking example. And we're not going to be changing the hand tracking because this is more of a core feature, a core script of the Magic Leap framework. But we're going to be changing the hand tracking example because that's basically an example that Magic Leap created. I want to change the name and I want to extend it just, just a little bit so that we can get the, the proper information. So 
The other thing that I'm going to be stealing from, from it, this example is this text status. I really like how they did the, you know, the confidence and also whether we're detecting the left or right hand. So the way that this works is it'll give you the percentage of the confidence if, you know, if it's tracking your left hand. Let's say that you're trying to track maybe a fist. And the way that it's going to work, it's going to detect that you're doing a fist, but it's not going to give you, it's going to give you a percentage based on what it thinks the the confidence is. So that's gonna, it's going to do it for both hands, for the left hand and also the right hand. So we're going to be using something like that, similar to that, but a little, maybe a little bit different in the way that we, we use the data. So what I'm going to be doing for this example, we're going to be, we're going to be copying this text status. And this is just a, a text, a text box. It doesn't have a lot of, a lot of things in it. I just didn't want to have to recreate that. And then let's go back into our project. And I created a scene for you already, and it's called default scene. So just go to assets, scene, default scene. And then in the hierarchy, if you look at on the rendering, we already have a head, a head post canvas. And if we paste that status label or text box, you're basically going to put it in the right place, so which, which should give us everything that we need as far as like the UI. Well, we're actually going to need one more thing. We're going to need to track whether we are muting and not muting. And we could add it to that. I, I want to add it and make it bigger because I want to see it in the, I really want to see it big as, a, as I'm doing the experience in Magic Leap. So let's go ahead and click on 2D and let's just resize this a little bit so that it, so that it is correct, correct sizing. So that works fine. And we can probably just nap it to the top. So by clicking on the anchor. Then the other thing that we could do, we could change the size and do something like, I think 15 works. Then on the status one, let's name that one. We can just call it mu, mu state. That's fine. And we're gonna snap that one to the bottom. So I just resize it. We can change the anchor and then change it to be the bottom. And the other thing that we can do, we don't need all that data. So this is basically going to be mute state. And we can say either, either it's on and off. And we can say that it's off by default. And we can also change the size. I'm going to make that one quite a bit large. In fact, I'm going to make it all the, go all the way through. So I'm just going to snap the left and right anchor. And we're going to go big. The reason I want to make it big is because I want to see that clearly as we're doing the hand tracking gesture. And we can do, we can probably do 48. I think that, I think that's fine. Okay. So I think UI, UI wise, we're, we're good to go. Now we got to work on the, on the other processes. So the, for content, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new, a new game object. And let's go ahead and call create an empty. So we're just gonna create an empty and I'm just gonna drag it and drop it under content. Probably just put it on the top. This one is gonna be the hand tracking, hand tracking controller. And in the hand tracking controller, we're gonna add a couple one script first, which is gonna be called the hand tracking. And this is the one that I was telling you about that is the core piece that Magic Leap provides. In fact, let's go in and check it out. And that's why I didn't want to change it because it's part of their Magic Leap core components. If we change this, then the next time we update the basically the Unity package that Magic Leap provides, it's going to get overbringing. We're going to have to try to find out what we changed. So I didn't want to really change this and touch this. So, so this is basically what they provide. So there are a few fields that you can use basically for configuration. And let's go back into Unity and I'll show you what those are. So you can tell it to track a specific key poses, and that's what we're going to be doing here. I don't want to track every single key pose. And in fact, Magic Leap also just announced and they released a new version where you can basically, as part of the framework, if you do no pose, it's still, it's not going to track a pose, but it's still going to send you the key points for each part of your hand. So each part of your hand, basically, if you're, if you're tracking your index finger or your pinky finger, each one of those fingers have basically what, what they call a key pose, a key point. And that key point has data associated with it. So 
that data can be, you know, whether that what what's the position of that of that key point, and it has additional information in it. So if you do no post, it's not doesn't mean that they're not gonna do hand tracking. They're still gonna do hand tracking, but they're not gonna be you're not gonna be tracking a specific key poses like you know doing a face, or like my open hand or you know and so on. So you can use no post for that. The for this example, I'm going to use two poses, and one is gonna be the fist, and the other one is gonna be the open hand back, and we can uncheck the no pose. So we should only have two basically two poses that we are tracking the on these key point filter levels this is how i guess i haven't really read a lot about it but i i would assume that it's you know how how accurate the key post information is saying and then how frequently does it check for you know for that for, for the actual hand tracking gesture so i i really didn't mess with these two settings i'm going to have you read that information and you know, the term ba based on what you read, you can basically set them. They work fine when I did extra smooth and then extra robust. So, so you can leave those two as, as they are. Then the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new new script and we're gonna create it based on a script that magically already wrote. And I like reusing a lot of you know if, if Magic Leap has something, let's just use it instead of recreating it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the hand tracking example. And I'm gonna paste it under scripts. And it looks like I paste the wrong thing, so let me just delete that. Let's go, let's go back to examples, hand tracking example. We're gonna go into scripts, and maybe if we select one of the scripts, there we go. So I'm gonna rename this to be hand tracking controller. Now we're gonna be focusing on, on refactoring the hand tracking example to be hand tracking controller. The other thing that I'm going to use, and I use the Mono Behavior Singleton that I created on, on a previous video a lot. So we're going to be creating, we're going to be reusing that. And this is going to be hand tracking controller. There we go. And I'm going to close, oh, and I need to rename this as well before we close the project. Sometimes I have issues with synchronizing the project. So I need to, let's go ahead and close it. Go to assets, open C sharp project. There we go. I just didn't like the, the red lines that it was showing. Okay, so so this is what we have right now. We we should have the hand tracking controller, which we're basing on the the example. And okay, I see what the problem is. We we just need to bring in the using statement for or core mono behavior singleton. All right, so now we need to add a couple of more fields. So the first one that I'm gonna need to add is I want to track the mute mute state so it's going to be mute state text and then we can say text to display we can say text to display gesture text to display when mute is on or off based on gesture there we go i think that sounds right so we're also gonna need another variable to track basically the confidence value that we wanna set. So for to do that, let's create a new serializable field. And this one is gonna be private flow key post, basically key post confidence value. We don't wanna use key post confidence because that's the, that's the same variable that we're using hand tracking. So I'm just gonna call it key post confidence value. Let's say that to a default of 0 0.6. And this is gonna be, you know, more of a percentage. If you if you think you want to start tracking a specific key post at a 60%, then you can set it to 0.6. If you want it to be at 80, if you want it to be very accurate and do maybe 99%, then you're more than welcome to change that. This is serializable, so you can customize it. So that's good so far. Then we're not gonna need, we're not gonna need the awake. In fact, we could we could just remove remove that for now. We're gonna be using the using a different different process for that. Okay, so on the on the update, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna need to update this because not only I want to be able to change the status text, but also be able to track the different key poses. So the what I'm gonna be doing is let's go ahead and add key couple of if statements in here 
that we're going to be needing. So the first one that we're going to need is we need to track whether we are, you know, we're doing a face or we're doing basically an open hand. So to do that, we're going to need ML hands. And this is a class that magically provides. And then left, and then we're going to say key pose. And then to a string, and we're just going to say, okay, if we're, if we're doing a fist, then this is what I want to be doing. So then ML hands, and then keep left. So we still need to track the left. And then on the left, we're going to say key pose confidence. And this is the key pose confidence value from zero to one that comes from the framework. So we're going to say, okay, if the key pose confidence is greater than equal to the key pose confidence value that we're setting here as a configuration, then we know that we're we know that we're tracking the face. So that means that if we're doing a face and the framework thinks that we're at a 60% or beyond, then we're doing a fist. So not only I want to do that on the on the left hand, but I also want to do it on the right hand. So I'm just gonna surround this with parentheses and we're gonna clean this up as we as we work on it. And then this one is gonna be the right hand and also the right value key pose confidence. So here we're going to say that we want to mute the audio and I haven't implemented that yet. We're going to implement it next. And then we're going to do another another if and with that if we're going to have to do we're going to do a different key pose and that one it's going to be the other one that we added. So if we go back into Unity and you remember the other one was called open hand back. And let me see make sure that we select the right. There we go. So the other one was called open hand back. So that's the other one that we need to check. So we're gonna say open hand back and we're gonna do the same thing here and here. And, and right now this is pretty, you know, this is a draft where we need to, in future videos, we'll customize this and, and maybe add a scriptable object that we can use to, to set some of these parameters. But for now, we're just gonna use, use, just use an if statement. All right, and then now that we have that, then we need to say mute. On this one is going to be on mute. So this one is going to be mute off, and this one is going to be mute on. So we're muting when we're doing a face, and then we're unmuting when we're doing an open hand. So we still need to implement this too. Mass implement. We won't forget since we're doing that right in in, a, in the next few minutes, but it's always good to put those comments. And let me just change the status text here. So this is what we're going to be displaying on the status text, the which hand gesture we're tracking, the percentage of confidence. And the other things that I like to add here too is I like to add uh, basically the the actual value, not, not the percentage itself, but the value from zero to one. So I'm going to be, let's just go ahead and do comma here, comma. This one's going to be left and right. And we're gonna do two string on this one, and two string there, and then we'll just do a comma here. This one is gonna be let's just say left. Uh, let's see, left C for left confidence, left hand confidence. So we can do LHC, and then this is gonna be four index four, and then we can just do comma right hand confidence. And it's going to be index five, so that we can see the basically the raw values that we're going to be using for our if statement. If we don't, if we look at the one that is being calculated, I might get it might I might get misled by the, you know, if for some if for whatever reason this doesn't work. Okay, so I think we're good here. I don't need these are some of the things that magically added they added regions for everything, which which is good, but not for what we're doing right now. So I'm just gonna remove some of those regions. There we go, and I can add the copyright by Magic Leap. I'm still giving them credit, so <laughs> we're just refactoring this. Then the other thing, let's just go ahead and add an awake back. I I removed it, but let's add it so that we can see. So if if you have another game or another experience where you want to use this hand tracking controller, we want to make sure that we're doing some sanity checks. So the sanity checks we're gonna say okay if status text equal null or mute mute state text equal null then we're just gonna basically prompt you and tell you that 
you need to set those two variables. So I can say status and mu state text needs to be set. And now we can say enable equal false to disable this game object. There we go. So that should give us some information. OK, so I think we have everything we need. We have status text, mu state text, key post confidence. I think everything, everything else looks great there. We don't need these comments. OK, and then so we need to implement this piece. OK, let's go ahead and Let's go back into let's go ahead and go back into Unity. So we have our hand tracking controller. And on the rendering piece, let's go ahead and so I told you to put the hand tracking controller in content. It's really not content. It's more of a it's more of a rendering thing. So let's put it on the rendering. I'm trying to get used to Magic Leap structure and I think it, it makes sense to put it on the rendering because that's where we have the Spectrum Manager and also the Canvas. All right, so I think that's good. So on the Spectrum Manager, if you remember from, or if you watch one of my previous videos that I, that I did on the on the actual Git Spectrum data, if you haven't, that's fine. I'll explain it to you here. So basically what this script does is, is reading the audio source, audio clip, and as it's reading that file, is is, is sending samples from the audio. So it's sending an array of 112. And then what's happened behind the scenes, these get filled, and I'm only using the first value to, to fill it up. So, oh, it looks like I changed this incorrectly. Okay, and I'm, for now, I'm just using the first value. So if the audio is really loud, this value is gonna be high. So this is kind of a wave, so it'll tell me, you know, as, as it's playing the audio, what the values are on the waveform. And I, I use those values to change the vertex displacement shader option on these models. So if I go into that model, you can see you're gonna see that I have I have what's called degrees. Oh, this is actually the floater. So it's on the shader itself. So if you expand the shader, I have a time speed and also a noise scale. So I use some of those values to basically deform the 3D object. So if we go back into the the actual spectrum manager. So we need to we need to change the spectrum manager so that it exposes two different methods. One method is going to be to mute the audio, and another method is going to be to unmute it. Not only I want to mute it, but I also want to pass the deformation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead, go back to Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to modify the spectrum spectrum manager here. So we're going to add a new variable here, and this is going to be a private. And it's going to be whether we're muting or not muting. So I'm going to set it to, to false by default. The other thing that I want to do is I'm going to add a new property. So it's going to say public bool is muted. You can say is muted. And then in here we can say get, do a getter, return whether we're muting or not or not. And we can also do a set here where we're gonna say we're gonna set the private variable equal to value. It's gonna be the value that we're passing in. Okay, so we have that done. Now the next thing is to actually implement two different two different methods. So the first one that we're gonna be needing to implement is gonna be public. The reason why it's gonna be public is because we need to access it from the hand tracking controller. So this is gonna be mute. And we're also gonna create a no a non-mute. So we're just gonna say unmute. Oh, we can call it mute on, mute up, mute off. Let's actually do that. Mute off. And we can say mute on. I think that's more explicit. So when we're muting, which means that we're we're doing the muting on, we want to change our variable is muted to true. We also want to change the audio source volume to zero. And I'm keeping this as simple as I can. And I'm also going to grab the samples, and the samples I'm going to change them to zero. So this is the array that is sending the information from the audio. So if you look in here, audio source that get spectrum data, we're passing an array, and that array it's basically sending you know an array of of value from the audio. So I'm going to set it to zero because I don't want to change the deformation on the 3D models. And then I'm going to also refactor this because we're going to need more than one line. 
excellent. So I think that's all we need on the mute on. On the mute off, we're gonna say is mute it equal false because we want to turn it off. We actually want to turn it. We we actually want to say that it's not muted anymore, so we can play the we can play the music, and then the audio source is gonna is gonna have a volume of one. So we're gonna basically restart. So it's not muted anymore. So we, we changed the is muted to false and also the volume back to one. And then the muted on is the reverse of that, except that we start, we, we set the first sample of the audio to zero. Now the next thing that we need to do is we, we don't wanna get data here if it's muted. So we wanna say if it's, if it's not muted, get the spectrum data. And then if it's muted, we don't get any spectrum data, which means that we set the samples to zero. So I think everything in here looks looks good. And, and again, this is using my singleton implementation so that we can access the spectrum manager. And so so now we can do now we can do something as simple as a spectrum manager instance and then mute on. So if we're doing a fizz, we are turning the volume off. We're also changing the vertex displacement so that it doesn't deform. And if we are using, doing an open hand, we're doing the reverse of that. So this is gonna be mute off. And we can remove these comments in here. So a couple of things that we could improve is instead of using strings in here, we can use an extension method. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go into Let's go ahead and go into project and under scripts. Let's create a new create a new folder because I, I know in the future we're gonna add another multiple extensions. And then this one it's gonna be a C sharp scripts, and we can say on this one, let's see, we're extending the key post, so we can say key post extension. Extension, there we go. Now we can open it back on. And Yep, the scene change, that's fine. There we go, let's go ahead and go back here. We can open it from here. All right, and this one is not gonna be a mono behavior. This is just gonna be a static class. So we're just gonna do public static. Excellent, and the if you hover, let's see, let's go into hand controller. So if we hover over key post, and in fact go into the definition, let's go ahead and there we go, so we need to extend the ML hand key post. We're gonna leave this file open, so I'm just gonna double click on the tab. Now let's go ahead and click on create a new method. So it's gonna be public static. And then the one that we need is, we need to make sure that this is a Boolean, so let's go ahead and make it a Boolean. And let's see, we're just gonna say is, we can say is fist. And then, there we go. So the way that you create an extension method is you say this, and then you gotta tell it what you're extending. And then we're just gonna say key post. There we go. And, and then what we can do is we can say if, let's see why is this complaining? Oh, because we need to return, that's fine. Probably need to bring in a using statement here. Is face, okay. Then we're gonna say if key post, we're basically just moving the logic. So this logic right here, we're just gonna move it and go here. So if it's a fizz, then we can say return true. We can in fact just do that. That's gonna that's gonna work as well. And we can add this to since it's only one line, it'll make sense as I as I finish and add it. And we can just do that. Now we can do the same thing for the is, let's see, is open handbag. So we, that's the other one. And we can just copy and paste that. And it's called open handbag. Okay, so these are just extension utilities that we can use so we don't use the strings explicitly. So if we're using, for instance, some of these ones in other places, we can just change this in one place. All right, so key post extension is good, and we can now change this to say is fist. You can see that, that that's a lot easier to read. 
and there we go and we can do the same thing on this one and this one is going to be is open there we go and we can do we can do that there okay and let's see what am i doing wrong oh yeah i don't want i don't need to do that check anymore because that's what this this extension is doing all right so i think i think we're good as far as like the coding piece so we have a new hand tracking controller that is using the mono behavior singleton we also added a new muted state text we're also using the status text also adding a key post confidence value to determine you know at what point we want to capture that key post we have some sanity checks in here for us if we're not setting the status text and mute state text which we can test now because we haven't set it so we should get an error so if we go ahead and hit play we should have an error and it looks like we didn't get an error let me see why and if i go into the hand tracking controller oh because we haven't added or or script just yet so we need to do that I'll go ahead and go back to the hand tracking controller and we need to add the script and it looks like now we haven't we haven't set it so if we hit play we should get an error and that should get disabled and let's see why am i getting so it looks like these two are getting disabled on play for some reason let's go ahead and hit play and and i think that might be because i'm running because i'm running in the let's see let me go ahead and that might be because i'm running in the editor and let me go ahead and go let's go into the examples let's see if that that's happening too on the examples if it doesn't happen on the examples then we did something incorrectly or i did something incorrectly let's go ahead and click in here and let's see what happens if i hit play and we are getting an error on this one and in fact it's not this one is getting disabled which is the same behavior and that's because let's see because we're getting an error there let me see why that is i don't know why this one oh that one is getting disabled because i haven't set the label let's go ahead and go back to our project and or scene so default scene and let's go ahead and check the controller so let's go ahead and do add the status and then we're also going to add the mute text and let's hit play and see if that comes up with the there we go so that's that's working let me go ahead and go back here instead of doing debug.log let's just do log error let's go back let's disable one of these and let's see what happens now and i'm not getting an error for some reason oh i am getting an error i just didn't see it okay let's just go ahead and put this console down here so we can see what's happening yeah so so now if i if i clear the log and i hit play you will see that i'm getting we're getting our error which is and i'm getting a bunch of things because we are the the get spectrum data is displaying the data and if we go back in here or oh, we can toggle we can remove the messages and just show the errors so we can see that we're getting a status a new state text needs to be set so that's that's working fine let's go ahead and set it back so the status text is going to be set to status new state text is going to be set to and i think i did the other thing really fast so make sure that you go to the hand tracking controller and change this debug that log to debug that log error so that it gives an error and it's more you know it makes it more clear when it comes to you know we we don't have something set all right so now we can we can clear this and i think we have everything that we need so far i always like to double check multiple times okay and if we hit if we hit play now we shouldn't get an error other than we don't have the yeah the hand tracking enable i think everything okay so everything is good so what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and, and run this in the device and see how that looks.
right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, don't forget to check out gamedev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers that are either studying or have advanced experience in the field. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon, which I'm using to fund this channel. Basically, I'm gonna be looking for getting a video editor, and that video editor professional is gonna help me in editing the future videos. So, Patreon is gonna help me with that. So, thank you very much for watching, guys.